The Matrix's system of control goes far beyond a simple simulation. It consists of multiple layers, from thought control to emotional control. Between these layers, there is a constant manipulation of the press and the civilian perception of the red pills who are labeled as dangerous criminals. But how was this system of control established? Also, why does law enforcement follow the orders and authority of the agents? Thanks to our members and subscribers for today's questions. Welcome to Matrix Explained. The desert of the real. Our first question comes from Firelight157. When Smith warns the police lieutenant about Trinity, why does the police appear to be working with the agents? Why do they follow the orders of the agents? An interesting question that talks about one of the glaring issues that are the least talked about in the Matrix. It involves the technological dictatorialism that exists in this world. Let me explain. When Neo was researching Morpheus on the internet, news articles were accusing Morpheus of being a criminal. The fact that there are reports of Morpheus' alleged crimes means that the simulation has control over the news media and the press, pushing the machine's rhetoric and agenda, creating false news to stain Morpheus' image and brand him and his followers as terrorists instead of heroes or vigilantes. However, the simulation cannot be controlled solely with propaganda. There must also be armed enforcement, and here is where the agents come in. The police and the military work by branches and ranks. The higher your rank, the more power and command you possess. Patrolmen must follow the orders of their superiors, and the superiors must assert their authority. Inside the Matrix, the agents are depicted as having governmental authority higher than any police officer. The police just know that these mysterious men in black are their superiors and they respond accordingly. But how do they know this? Well, there are two possible explanations. One is that the agents pretend to be as human as possible, emulating working departments similar to the FBI or the CIA who are higher ranking than police officers and thus must be recognized as having higher authority, even though it's a facade. This means that the spheres of government power and authority in the matrix are programs. For example, the first responders could be humans but their superiors such as politicians, world leaders, and of course agents could be programs that monitor these lower ranking humans. And two is that it occurs at an unconscious level, that by default, the humans connected to the matrix tend to respect the agents without question. Although this creates a new question as of how Neo was able to evade this programmable instinct at the beginning of the matrix. Some matrix comic books show how humans are pre-programmed. In artistic freedom, the people who went to a new museum exhibition were petrified and suffered panic attacks upon seeing sculptures of the Sentinels without knowing why. This was because they knew, at an unconscious level, that these monstrosities existed. Farewell Performance is about a psychology student writing a report about why people don't feel free. And even the architect spoke of choice as something unconscious and possibly programmed into humans. So it is difficult to know for certain what emotions and instincts have been encoded into the imprisoned humans to have them accept the rules and norms of the machines without question. After all, this is how our brains work. When something just works, we do not question why. When was the last time you asked yourself how money works? Why does it have value? And why is it the only way to purchase items and pay bills? Why does it work this way? Who decided that the system should work this way? Cultural paradigms are things that we accept because they have always been that way, and most of us don't question them. Ergo, inside the Matrix, the agents have always been the highest level of law and order, and that's that. Our second question comes from Edward Richards. What's at the end of the street in Matrix 1? When Trinity says to Neo that he doesn't want to go there, he is referring to the Adam Street Bridge scene after Neo gets into the car. You know that road? Really know exactly where it ends and I know that's not where you want to be more than just a literal option this is a conflict of choices does Neo choose to stay in the car and possibly change his life or does he get out of the car and return to his mundane life 
When Trinity told Neo that he knows where the end of that street leads, she meant that at the end of it was the life of Thomas Anderson, a life without meaning or purpose, spending nights searching for something, anything, depressed and with an innate feeling of wanting to escape. This is what lies at the end of that street, a life of disappointments, imagining what would have been if he had stayed in the car, a void that he could never fill, Neo watching the dark, empty, far-reaching street reminded him of his life that he did not want to return to, and so he decided to stay in the car towards the point of no return. And our last question of the day comes from Stuffed. In the first Matrix, we got the deja vu effect when they changed something in the Matrix. So, why didn't this magic work in any other movie from this trilogy? Simple, it's thanks to the manifestation of the anomaly. These changes that happened to the simulation in Matrix 1 were caused by the agents and the architect. They were traps for the red pills. But once Neo became the one, these traps were no longer effective because Neo could then also change the simulation in real time. It was now pointless to try and change the code, like removing a door that's supposed to exist when Neo can just break through it. The machines are efficient and logical. So perhaps they determined that it was no longer useful to change the Matrix code to stop a Neo or the red pills. But it's not like the machines simply stopped changing the Matrix completely. The Deja Vu Cat didn't make an appearance in Matrix Revolutions. This ability was not lost. The architect and any program in charge of modifying the simulation can still do so, including the Deja Vu Cat. But do you agree? Why do the police blindly follow the orders of the agents? What would have happened if Neo got out of the car? Could the Deja Vu Cat be a program that can change the Matrix code? For Matrix Explained, please leave a like and subscribe. And thank you for visiting the Desert of the Real.